from CBS News Bay Area. This is the Afternoon Edition. Okay, right now on the Afternoon Edition, this is a live look from Chopper 5 San Francisco work crews trying to fix a massive sinkhole that opened up in the middle of the intersection. You see that gap right there in the middle of those two streets. Good afternoon, I'm Ryan Yamamoto. We begin with that breaking news right out of San Francisco. This is at the intersection of Fillmore and Green Streets. That's a residential intersection just on the north side of the Pacific Heights neighborhood and sitting just above Cow Hollow and heading down into the Marina District. Our very own Jose Martinez is live at that sinkhole with what we know so far. And it sounds like it's really loud out there, Jose, and that sinkhole is absolutely massive. That's right. I mean, a real emergency right here. I'm going to try to explain a little bit. It's going to be very loud, but I want you to take a look at this gigantic sinkhole and all the operation that's going right now underway in this part of the city. Let me tell you something. This happened last night around 1125. Now, they have been here all night long working on this. Take a look at that gigantic part of the symbol in the middle. You know, we can see how they're drilling this part, working very hard to try to contain this emergency here. Now, PG&E is here too. We are gonna be talking to them later today to understand what exactly happened last night. They haven't confirmed if it was an actual the water main uh, break would have actually cost this emergency, but you can see everybody is here working really hard. We already talked to some neighbors who are also reacting to this, and we're going to have, of course, some of those details later today. Back to you. All right, thanks, Jose. It's really loud with your work. It's all right to go and to get the rest of the story right. Now to another intersection, this one in Redwood City, where a Union Pacific train collided with a tractor trailer. This happened around 1030 this morning near the intersection of Bloomcrest Street and Seaport Boulevard. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but police are on the scene investigating. And if you rode BART this morning, well, you may have already noticed some big changes. BART is hoping system-wide renovations will help boost ridership. Sean Chitness at Montgomery BART Station in San Francisco with that breakdown. A new promise and commitment from BART to be a reliable service for riders around the clock and throughout the week. They say no one should have to wait more than 20 minutes, day or night, or even on weekends. In addition to phasing out the remaining legacy trains dating back to when BART opened in 1972, they're increasing service, especially on weekends. That should go up 50%. The fleet of the future, as they call it, will be the new trains used in BART service. They're going to have new seats, new signs, and a new audio system. Wait times should no longer reach half an hour for anyone. And on the yellow line, which is BART's busiest weekday route, trains will go from every 15 minutes to every 10 minutes. That's the line that takes people from Pittsburgh to the peninsula. We need to grow our ridership, and we have been steadily growing ridership throughout the pandemic but we want to bring back more people. So we're inviting everybody. If you haven't been on BART in a while, this is a great time to come back. And you should notice more people in each car. That's because there are going to be fewer cars with each train. It's part of the approach to make the experience better by having it cleaner and you feel a larger police presence when you're on the train. As for those legacy trains that are set for retirement, BART plans to have an official ceremony for that. They say likely in 2024. Back to you. Thanks, Sean. Now to another uh, another change on the horizon for BART. New fare gates to prevent fare jumpers. BART is spending about $90 million to put them in, and you won't see them for a while. The entire project is expected to take until 2026. Prototypes are supposed to be installed at the West Oakland station by the end of this year. And BART is warning if you doesn't get a bailout from the state, it will face major economic issues. And so far, well, there's been no deal. Okay, switching gears, some exciting updates for your weather right here at CBS News Bay Area. We've got a new immersive set that allows us to share forecasts like you've never seen before. First alert meteorologist Jessica Burtz is here. And Jessica, yeah. we've already been using this on the new primetime edition at PIX Plus, but this is the first time we're seeing this here at noon. So give us a spin, give us a tour. It's really exciting. I mean, this is the first time I'm using it as your local meteorologist, this new set that we have. So let's just dive straight into the forecast, starting off with a live look outside from our windows at the Golden Gate Bridge, where we're seeing clear skies widespread throughout the Bay Area. You know what's awesome about today's forecast? We're kicking off this week with dry conditions, sunny skies, even along the coast. I mean, temperatures right now from the Santa Clara Valley all the way along our coastline, we're sitting right around average. We're in the 70s from Santa 
San Jose all the way off to Los Gatos. Watch what happens as we head just a little bit more north. Temperatures still staying around average along our coastline too. 70s near Oakland, 70 degrees right now in San Francisco. It's been such a beautiful forecast so far. Watch what happens as we head just a little bit more north all the way up into Napa and Sonoma we go. Vallejo even sitting at 73 degrees right now. So we're off to a mild start for us this work week. And I'm going to show you some other cool tools that I have here in our forecast center in just a little bit. But I want to start off also with what's happening later into this evening. We have a cold front actually pushing in later tonight, early tomorrow morning. So temperatures are going to drop a lot as we head into our forecast tomorrow. Enjoy the sunshine while we have it. And for our friends along the coast, we are still dealing with just a little bit of that cold coastal fog slowly creeping its way in and out throughout the rest of our forecast today. That's in areas like Pacifica and Half Moon Bay all the way into dinner time hours tonight and into the overnight hours too. But other than that, this is a gorgeous forecast for us. I'm going to show you what you can expect coming up to, for the rest of the week in just a little bit. But for now, Ryan, I want to send it right back over to you. All right. Thanks, Jess. Well, today, Americans marking 22 years since the September 11th terror attacks, which killed nearly 3000 people and forever changed this country. Jared Hill reports from near Ground Zero in New York City. Mourners gathered in Lower Manhattan to remember the thousands of lives lost in the September 11th terror attacks 22 years ago today. James M. Amato. Joseph Amatuccio. In keeping with tradition, family members read aloud the names of loved ones who were killed. My sister, Jody Tepidino. Niccolo, we miss you, Jody. We love you. Your light still shines as bright as it ever did. At the Pentagon, an American flag was unfurled and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin took part in a reef laying to honor the nearly 200 lives lost there. The men and women of the Department of Defense will always remember. And in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, relatives left flowers at the memorial wall for victims of United Flight 93. The plane crashed when passengers tried to overtake the hijackers. Back here in New York, the fire department, which lost 343 members that day, continues to lose members even now. First responders are dying from illnesses stemming from the rescue and recovery efforts at Ground Zero. World Trade Center illness is very real. Uh, we lose so many people to it, um, and early prevention and detection and treatment is key. As family members grieve, they hold true to their enduring message to never forget. And here at home, our community is also remembering that fateful day and the lives lost in Oakland. City officials joined the Oakland Fire Department this morning for a moment of silence in front of City Hall. A massive American flag was hung from a fire department crane. And in San Francisco, this is video from the morning of the ceremony cell at Fire Station 35. This, of course, is along the Embarcadero. And during that event, city firefighters read out the names of all 343 New York firefighters lost on 9-11. There will also be a ceremonial bell ringing to mark the time when that South Tower of the World Trade Center actually collapsed. 